Adam, did the storms affect anything at the fair? They actually did, Judy. Behind me here, you can see the Ferris wheel actually was closed down during the storm because of the dangerous lightning that we had in the area, and they're still drying it out. They're hoping to help have it open soon, and you can even see there are crowds gathering around as well. As we take a look at the weather situation, behind me there are some dark clouds out there, and they are going to continue to stick around in the short term. We well, the current snowpack up in the mountains, of which I'm about knee-deep in here, is of concern for local residents when it comes to the flood season. Well, Donna, it's a beautiful day here at Bozeman beach and as you look over the beach here there's numerous patrons enjoying this wonderful weather sun just get behind the cloud we've been in the 80s all day but to during those bigger years when we saw some higher floods the river level actually would rise almost up over my head where I'm standing. And while this neighborhood has returned back to normal a year after the storm, Jacobs tells us that they're still seeing three additional cars per week coming in for some hail damage from the storm more than a year ago. Just beyond this arch could be as far as you could go if there is a government shutdown. Let's go ahead and take a look at the crowd here. We got about 100 people lined up to get inside this carnival. It just opened up about 35 minutes ago. It's just full of excitement here and I'm going to stick around. I'll have your full weather forecast and much more. We'll even talk about those rivers in more details coming up. Meteorologist Adam Bell live with you inside the Storm Tracker Weather Center. We have a severe thunderstorm warning just issued for the mining city. Butte under a severe thunderstorm warning. The Silver Bow County in effect until 8:15 this morning. The, in fact, we've already confirmed that this is a severe thunderstorm. A big picture across the Pacific Northwest. The reason why we're seeing such nice weather, high pressure off to our south and west is building on in, and that's going to get rid of all these clouds. You know, what's your favorite kind of weather? Um. Sunny. Sunny. Well, you know what? I wish I had better weather, but we're not going to get some sunny conditions. In fact, let's take a look at our weather graphics. And you can see it's in line. You know, I'm tall enough to ride this ride. That's the exciting part. I'm actually very <laughs> thrilled about being able to ride it. So. I may be too heavy. <laughs> All right. Have a good night. Your accurate forecast from Adam Bell starts now with Storm Tracker Weather on Montana's news station. Welcome back. Let's start with what's going on right now. We have a severe thunderstorm watch still in effect for a few counties across our area. We've got Jefferson, uh, Deer Lodge, and Powell counties also involved in the watch, and that is in effect until 8 o'clock tonight. What that means is that there are severe thunderstorms still possible through the 8 o'clock hour. Further south across uh, the southern part of our viewing area, no watches have been posted. We still have the potential for some wet weather. In fact, we're still going to see some of those thunderstorms, and those storms could add, along with the snow melt, to rising waters across the region. That's why there's a flood a flood watch actually issued for the southern part of our viewing area, including Beaverhead, Madison, and Gallatin counties. And this is in effect until Saturday morning. So we are not out of the woods yet in terms of the rising waters here in southwest Montana. A local look at some of the uh, storms that have been developing in the last couple hours. You can still see most of the heavier thunderstorms and the stronger ones are well off to our north and east. But we did have one roll through Belgrade, another one just getting ready to go toward the west Yellowstone area, another one just outside of Dillon. Nothing major with these storms. No warnings have been posted, but they could still bring some brief heavy rain, some small hail, and yes, even some gusty winds as well. A few clouds over in the mining city right now, 66 degrees. Did see a thunderstorm roll through earlier in the day, picked up 15 hundredths of an inch of precipitation. Let's take a step outside with our first interstate bank ICAM in the Bozeman area. And as we look in the distance, you can see all these storms, but so far they have missed downtown Bozeman, but they did not miss the other areas across the Gallatin Valley. Over in the mining city, once again, just a few clouds out there, clearing skies in between storms, but we're not done yet. We still have a little bit more time before these storms roll back on. As we go over back to the Bozeman numbers, 73 degrees. We did pick up some precipitation over at the Belgrade Airport. That's what that brief thunderstorm that rolled through. Still gusty out there. Southwest wind at 13 miles an hour, gusting to 29. But look how warm it got this afternoon. 85 degrees, a pretty comfortable afternoon aside from the pop up showers and thunderstorms across the rest of the state. You can definitely tell where the showers and storms are versus where there is clear skies with temperatures still in the 80s from Jordan to Mile City out toward Billings. Then you get into clouds and showers, 60s and 70s. And yes, these are numbers more typical of what we're going to see for our high temperatures the next several days. Wanted to break down just a little quickly for you here. What makes a thunderstorm severe? There are actually three criterion that the National Weather Service uses to determine whether a thunderstorm is going to be severe. If you see 58 mile an hour winds or stronger with the storm, that's one. Hail one inch in diameter or larger. And of course, if you see a tornado with the storm, all of those, any of those three would make a thunderstorm severe. The difference between a watch and a warning, watch is basically kind of like a caution, the yellow light. The warning is more like the red light. The storms are imminent. You need to move indoors immediately. And usually the warnings are issued right when the storm is happening as opposed to the watch. The severe thunderstorm watch that was issued for a few of our counties actually was issued around one o'clock this afternoon, so well in advance 
of the storms moving back on through the area. As we look at what we can expect in the clouds and precipitation forecast, thunderstorms are going to roll on through tonight into tomorrow morning. Cooler weather moving in behind it for our Friday high, even into the weekend as well. But then high pressure is going to start moving back on in through about uh, mid to late this weekend into early next week. We will see that sunshine return to the region. For your forecast for tonight, though, expect partly cloudy skies, thunderstorms likely, especially early on this evening. Tomorrow, high temperatures about 10 to 15 degrees cooler than what we saw today. So you will definitely feel those highs on a little bit chillier than what we've seen the last couple of days. Overnight tonight across the mining city, watch for those thunderstorms. Some strong ones still possible early. Some isolated storms early in the day tomorrow across the Butte area, 68 degrees. That's it for the high temperature. Bozeman tonight, 47 degrees with those thunderstorms, 69. That's it for the high temperature. As we look at the seven day forecast, we are looking at some scattered showers still likely over the next several days, but it will definitely be better as we head toward Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. We're looking at 81 degrees returning, so it's nice to see a little bit some warmer temperatures returning and in Butte we're also seeing 60s for the few next few days 70s though on the horizon. We're going to take a short break. Ted Dawson in sports coming up next. The Gallatin Field Airport has taken one step to handling more aircraft and passengers. Joining us live is our own Adam Bell from the airport with more on this terminal expansion. Adam. Thanks, Donna. I am live inside the expansion of the Gallatin Field Airport Terminal. And here on the base floor, you can see there's still quite a bit of work to be done. In the distance, you can actually see some of the ticket counters that will eventually be here about a month away from opening up the lower part. But it's the upstairs. That's where all the excitement is today. Excitement that's been two years in the making. Well, we are just ecstatic about uh, opening up the, the two new gates. It's a, a taste of the future, so to speak. From July 2009 to June 2011 and $40 million later, the terminal expansion at Gallon Field is nearing completion as new gates from the expansion become a part of the current airport terminal. What they will do is allow us to park a few more airplanes at the terminal. We won't have to tow airplanes around. Uh, you know, we, we add another, uh, I think about seven flights a day starting at the end of this week. So uh, this gate comes none too soon. The opening of the terminal expansion will happen in three phases. Currently, gate number five is now open and operational and have its first flight Tuesday afternoon, a Delta flight arriving from Minneapolis at 115. Gates six through eight are scheduled to open up by the end of June, and the grand opening of the entire structure is scheduled for July 20. Now, by late this month, Airport Director Brian Springer says all eight gates will be operational, and on those busiest summer travel days, we will see all of them full in the overnight hours. Now, we're also going to talk a little bit about some numbers here. We are expecting anywhere from one half to two million passengers to be able to be the capacity of the new airport. By comparison, in 2011, this year, we're expecting anywhere to around three quarters of one million passengers. So quite a big expansion is on its way. Reporting live from Gallatin Field, I'm Adam Bell for Montana's News Station. Thank you, Adam.